lecture today is uh, about the Murillo Velarde maps and I was asked by Mrs. Ongpin to talk about the Murillo Velarde maps uh, which are not displayed by the way in the map exhibit but the 1734 was displayed in the recent uh, exhibit at the, Metro at the Metropolitan Museum uh, very rare occasion to see the very rare map okay? And uh, we have three versions of the, at least three versions, uh, the 1734, the 1744, uh, and the 760 maps. Um, okay, so uh, the title of my talk is on power, beauty, and knowledge, especially uh, in Philippine antique maps, but more particularly this afternoon on in the Murillo Velarde maps. And this will be my outline. We are going to talk about what is called the Icaria view, very important in understanding, in appreciating maps, antique maps. Uh, the significance of maps. Today, uh, the maps are no longer just discussed by geographers, cartographers, but by philosophers, social scientists, anthropologists. Maps are very, uh, is an interdisciplinary subject today. And then we, we will talk, the next important topic will be what is called the cartographic transaction or the cartographic transformation. Uh, what happens to a space when it is mapped. And uh, the last part will be about the Murillo Velarde map, the 1734, the, because there is a narration, there is a discourse, there is a discourse on, on maps. And to begin, uh, I'll ask you to appreciate this very famous painting of Peter Bruegel the Elder, of uh, 1558, it's the landscape with the fall of Icarus, which is found in the Musée Royal de Beaux Arts in Brussels, the Museum of the Royal Museum of Fine Arts in Brussels, and uh, it shows a farmer plowing the fields, a shepherd tending his sheep, and uh, here there's a fisherman, and uh, it's very important to. Uh, I take this as an iconic painting for the appreciation of photography. The poet W. H. Auden wrote a poem about this painting and the poem is entitled Musée de Beaux Arts. Okay, and this is the, the lines from Auden. In Bruegel's Icarus, for instance, how everything turns away quite leisurely from the disaster the plum and the farmer may have heard the splash, the forsaken cry, but for him, it was not an important failure. The sun shone as it had to on the white legs disappearing into the green water, and the expensive, delicate ship must have seen something amazing. A boy falling out of the sky had somewhere to get to and sailed calmly on. This is about book eight from Ovid's Metamorphosis, where Daedalus and his son Icarus are imprisoned in the palace of Minos and the only way of escaping is by air and so Daedalus the father constructs flying machines made out of feathers and wax. He then commands his son to fly out but not to fly too near the sun but of course his son was dis disobeyed him and so he flies too near the sun, his wings melt, and he plunges into the sea. And this is, uh, wait, sorry. Uh, there, uh, I guess one thing about this painting is, at least one reflection is that uh, human beings always shy away from the disaster. So they're too absorbed in their work that they do not notice suffering beyond them. The plowman, they do not see the, the legs, this, this uh, Icarus falling into the sea. 
But the important point for us is to realize that when we look at a map, we are like Icarus looking from above. In other words, uh, looking from above like an eagle, uh, looking at something from a distance, but being able to read the details. And this is very important to remember. This is called the Icarian view. It is a panoramic view, a plunging view. It's a view of what is very far, and yet we can read the details. The view of the distance and the detail, and which we call the Icarian view. So when you look at a map on the wall, it's as if you're flying above the map. And this flying above the map connotes power. Because as the epistemologist Christian Jacob wrote in his book, The Sovereign Map, which was originally a French book, uh, to look at a map is to see the world from above and it is really to be like God who sees everything. Of course, this is a God who is like a voyeur, a surveyor. So, uh, remember you have this, the eye of God who sees everything. This is the famous Mourinho of the map of 1734, Carta Hydrographica y Corográfica de las Islas Filipinas. And uh, we have, it's made by a Jesuit, Father Pedro Mourinho of Velarde, whom I'll talk about later on. And there are engravings, there are, draw, there are drawings made by Francisco Suarez, a Filipino and Indio. And the engraver is Nicolas de la Cruz Bagay. It's a very huge map. And today there are less than 10 copies of this map. One, in the, one, map, one copy is at the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Paris. One is in the British Museum. I think there are at least, there should be two copies here because Carlos Trino had a copy. He, but I think uh, he sold it or he gave it to Madame Marcos. I, I do not know where that is. But there is one copy which was exhibited in our recent exhibit. Uh, we shall talk about this map later on. It's a, so, a map therefore presupposes power. The one who has the map is able to get to the treasure. The one who is able to get the map is able to bombard his enemies. Okay. That's why they say uh, geography is a clue. Geography is the way perhaps war is the way by which Americans learn about other people, about other lands. Okay. Um, and then in the recent election, you have the mapping. The reds, the blues, etc. So here we have the symbols of power. Uh, we have the, the Leon, uh, the Lion of Castile here. But what is interesting is to see here, there's a guy here who is stroking his rooster. There's a Indera there smoking a tobacco. Then there's a Muslim. I think there's an Aita somewhere. Uh, there's a Chinese. And uh, there's a captured history in the medallion or in the cartouche. Uh, this is the 1744 edition of that map, uh, which was printed on uh, rice paper here in the Philippines. And again, we see uh, what is unusual here is there was a legend in the 18th century which said that Francisco Javier had reached Mindanao. Actually, he never set foot in Mindanao, but it's a good legend. And he's here sailing towards Mindanao, uh, being held by cherubs. And there was supposed to be a storm in the Moluccas. And, and so he hurled his crucifix into the sea to come to sea. But the happy story was that when he reached shore, there was a big crab that was holding the crucifix, giving, back, giving it back to him. And of course, the there's a certain symbolism there. The crab is like 
Islam, you know, uh, the Crescent, and uh, 